Okay, this is video two on the uh, genetics problems. And so let's go ahead and look at this next example here with Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is another one that affects the central nervous system and is 100% fatal. The only thing is, Huntington's disease doesn't begin to show its uh, initial symptoms, usually until the person is in middle age. So that means that the person is completely normal until around sometime in the 40s, which means the person very, very likely could have had children and could have passed this on to the next generation. So in Tay-Sachs, the person who has the disease did not pass the disease on to the next generation. It was passed on by carriers. Here in Huntington's disease, the person who has the disease passes it on to the next generation. Now, this is a pretty rough disease because uh, it will run its course over about 10 or 15 years and it will begin with uh, Parkinson's-like symptoms and the person just steadily loses motor control and they eventually wind up losing the ability to communicate. The other thing is the person doesn't lose mental capacity and the individual winds up just pretty much trapped in their body and so it's a, it's a really nasty disease. Um, so the Huntington's, uh, the individual with Huntington's disease has a dominant trait and is heterozygous. They have one dominant allele that causes the uh, Huntington's disease. So let's take a look at this and let's look at an example. So what, what we will have with this is this individual right here, if I can make that look like an H, this individual that is homozygous dominant this one we will not we will not see as a live bird. So this individual is not viable. So that one will cause uh, developmental problems uh, such that we will not see that as a live bird. This one that is heterozygous, this is the person that will have the Huntington's disease. That's the Huntington's disease, and folks who are free of Huntington's disease, these people have two recessive alleles, so homozygous recessive. So, recall from the previous slide that Huntington's occurs only in one out of 20,000 people. So that means 19,999 people out of 20,000 are of this type right here. So this is an example where the uh, dominant is not necessarily the most common. Here being homozygous recessive is by far the most common. Okay, so let's look at the genetics of this. And what we would have would be this situation right here where you have one individual that has Huntington's disease and is heterozygous, and the other individual, since it's only one in 20,000 that's going to have this, odds are the other individual is going to be normal. It's not going to have Huntington's disease. So the gametes, half the gametes will carry big H, half the gametes little h, big H for Huntington's, little h for uh, normal over here, all the gametes would be little h. So, put this in a point square for mom, we can get big H or little h for dad, we can get little h. So, we could say, What is the probability of a child from this couple where one parent had Huntington's disease, the other was free of it? What is the probability of a child from that couple having Huntington's? Well, Right here is the child that would have Huntington's disease, and this one would not have Huntington's disease. So the probability of a child having Huntington's disease would be 50%. Okay, let's look at this one. Sickle cell anemia. 
Now, sickle cell anemia, we had a situation that um, uh, sickle cell is a condition where cells become elongated, the red blood cells become elongated under conditions of oxygen deprivation. And so what will happen is normal red blood cells are these smooth round structures like this in a person with sickle cell most of the red blood cells are smooth round structures but some of these red blood cells are elongated like that if anyone gets his name some of them have kind of this sickle shape to them like that so grass your sickle shape and so what happens is that these Elongated cells tend to hang up in the capillaries, causing blockages there. They also tend to hang up in the larger vessels, causing blood clots throughout the body. This cuts off the supply of oxygen to tissues throughout the body, leading to damage in this tissue in a wide variety of tissues throughout the body. And so the person with sickle cell has... Uh, runs up with a, a list of medical problems just as long as you're on. It's a uh, uh, very serious uh, genetic disease, and uh, of course, uh, these problems due to uh, cutting off the supply of oxygen to tissues throughout the body this is going to lead to just cumulative damage over time. So, this person with sickle cell will be okay for a little while, and then they will have episodes where they will have intense pain, uh, they'll have damage to tissues, they can, they can have blood clotting as well as internal bleeding, and so it is a extremely serious genetic disease. Um, also notice there are standardized symbols for the alleles. So the allele for normal red blood cells is Hb for hemoglobin, HB superscript A, and the allele for uh, sickle cell is HBS. So HB again is hemoglobin, the protein that's affected there in the red blood cells. Now, notice here in the United States, this is primarily seen in the black population or African American population here in the United States. Now, the reason for that is the origin of this uh, this allele, the HBS, uh, leads back to West Africa. So, in uh, West Africa, there are some regions of West Africa where the uh, occurrence of, of the sickle cell and the occurrence of carriers is even higher than it is in the African American population here in the United States. So, notice in the U.S., one person in 12 within this population is a carrier, and approximately one person in 500 actually has a disease. This disease has the highest rate of occurrence of any of the severe genetic diseases. So, let's look at the genetics associated with this. So, this is generally going to be passed on uh, by carriers, similar to what we had with uh, sickle cell, except, I'm sorry, what we had with Tay-Sachs disease, except this is not necessarily fatal at a young age. Now, um, it does tend to uh, debilitate the person who has the disease, and uh, there will be different different degrees to which the person will be affected. But uh, what we'll generally see is a situation like this where we have uh, both parents of carriers. Okay, so we've got this parent, HBA, HBS, I don't know what happened right there, HBA, HBS, And here's our other parent right here, also HBA, HBS. And then the gametes from this 
would be HP A, HP S, so half the egg cells HP A, half the egg cells HP S, sperm cells, same thing. Okay? Half sperm cells HP A, half sperm cells HP S. Okay? So now then, what we do is put this on the Punnett square and look at the probabilities associated with it. And so, let's see, right here. okay. So, we have all of mom's gametes across the top axis HBA and HBS. HBA, HBS. So we can look at possible combinations. I'm going to drop the HB off of them just to make this a little simpler. We could have that child that's completely free of this. We could have this child that is a carrier, like the parents. This child that is a carrier, like the parents. And this would be the child with uh, sickle cell anemia. Okay? So from this couple right here, both both individuals being carriers for sickle cell, probability of a child having sickle cell would be one out of the four possibilities, or a one fourth probability. Probability of a child being a carrier like the parents would be two two out of the four possibilities, or one half. Okay. okay, so we can look at a variety of, of uh, possibilities there. Let's look at uh, one other, and that is what if you have one parent, one, oh, one parent who is a carrier and the other parent is completely free of this. Okay. To have this disease, the child has to get the HBS from both parents. This couple could have this child that's completely free of it, and they could also have this child that is a carrier. They could not have this child that actually has the disease because that child would have to get the HBS from both parents. Okay, okay so we'll stop right there and we'll pick up with this uh, ABO. Well, I thought we would pick up with this ABO uh, system in the uh, third video. Okay. Thank you.